Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Let's discuss the next name reaction that is Bamford Stevens reaction. We all know that we have four components to understand a particular reaction in an easy manner. The first component is statement, second one general equation, third one mechanism followed by the applications. Let's see the statement of this particular reaction. It is a base catalyzed conversion of tosyl hydrozones of carbonyl compounds into alkenes. It means that what this reaction is useful for the synthesis of alkenes. We should have a focus on the reactants. If you see the reactants, these are what tosyl hydrozone of carbonyl compounds. We know that the general representation of carbonyl compound is RC double bond O. If it is treated with hydrazine NH2 NH2, we will come up with the compound that is what RCR double bond N NH2. This is what hydrazone. But we need what? A tosyl group. How can we get the tosyl group from this compound? Paratoline sulfonyl CH3 S double bond O double bond OCl Paratoline sulfonyl chloride If this one is treated with this particular moiety what happens? The removal of HCl takes place Then this complete moiety this is commonly called as a tosyl group Paratoline sulfonyl group directly attached to nitrogen That is the representation of your reactant. Okay. Tosyl means this is TS. TS representation is this one. Methyl group, phenyl ring and SO2. That is commonly tosyl group. So, tosyl hydrozone of carbonyl compound. Is treated with what? A base. Here the base may be sodium methoxide, sodamide or it may be hydride or it may be sodium in ethylene glycol. We can use any one of the base. Then what happens? We will come up with alkene. Simply if you see the situation, just remove this particular pi bond and remove the hydrogen. Simply place pi bond here. That is your product. The hydrogen is transferred to this particular carbon. Let's see the mechanism. Already we know that in this particular reaction, we are using a base or not. Generally, what is the use of the base? It can remove a proton. So, whatever the base which we have used here, the base is going to remove the proton from this nitrogen. That's why what happened? The removal of the proton from the nitrogen generates minus charge on this nitrogen. N minus. Then what happens? The this particular nitrogen is going to donate its lone pair of electrons. Thereby, what happens? The TS group removed in the form of TS minus. Tosyl group is removed. Then we will come up with what? Carbon nitrogen pi bond and nitrogen nitrogen pi bond. Then what happens? This minus charge again come back to form a pi bond between. Two nitrogens that is going to be triple bond and the carbon is going to get what? Minor charge. That can be represented in this way. If we remove the nitrogen in this way, what happens? Here the breaking of carbon nitrogen bond is going to produce a positive charge on the carbon or not? Already negative charge is present. The positive and the negative both will form a lone pair. That's why we are coming up with what? An intermediate that is called as what? Carbene intermediate. This is what? Carbene intermediate. So, in this carbene intermediate, we are having lone pair of electrons or not? These lone pair of electrons are involved in the pi bond formation. If a carbon carbon pi bond is formed here, what will happen? The valency of this carbon is going to be increases or not? That's why we need to remove a particular bond so that the proton is removed in the form of H- and approach this carbon. Why the H- is approaching this carbon? Because this carbon is donating its lone pair of electrons means we are creating what? Positive charge. 
it wants negative charge so h minus move towards this particular carbon we will come up with what your r k this is very simple mechanism right the last portion is what applications the first example in which we are observing the r groups are replaced with methyl groups see methyl 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 then in the final product we are having three r groups or not so three methyl groups and proton in the second example it is one of the important example if you see this particular moiety it is the tosyl hydrogen of carbonyl compound simply if you see the reactant what is happening we are removing hydrogen from this carbon and pi bond from this carbon see we need to remove pi bond from this carbon at the alpha position we need to remove the hydrogen but in this case what happens we are having two hydrogens or not if you remove this particular hydrogen the pi bond will formed here if you remove this particular hydrogen the pi bond will formed here therefore we are getting two products or not this is the first product this is the second product the thing is that why the first one is the major one the reason is that what in the first case what is happening the oxygen lone pair electrons are involving in the conjugation with the pi bond already we know that if you have the conjugated pi bonds the stability of the compound is high or not that's why this compound formation is major okay the last example is very simple here also similar kind of situation here one hydrogen is there here also one hydrogen is there if you remove this hydrogen you will come up with pi bond here otherwise if you remove this proton the pi bond will present here if you remove this proton whatever the pi bond it is forming it is going to have the conjugation with the oxygen or not that's why this one is the major product so in this way you can easily remember the four components statement general equation mechanism and applications of your bamford stevens reaction